Good evening. The first thing most little kids grab in the morning are their toys or stuffed animals. But a terrifying number of children in some parts of the world, kids as young as two years old, grab something else, cigarettes. They're not playing with them, they're lighting up. Some up to 40 cigarettes a day. Who's to blame? Dan Harris follows the trail of smoke. This story begins with a thoroughly modern icon, the cherubic toddler now known all over the world as the smoking baby. 13 million people watch this YouTube clip of the two-year-old puffing hungrily on cigarette after cigarette with his family looking on. A two-year-old smoking a cigarette. You know what would get the kid to cut back on cigarettes for good? It's a lesser known treatment called don't give him any. <laughs> But while many people viewed this video as just another passing fascination in the age of YouTube, we heard that this child was actually the tip of the iceberg, just one part of a much larger story. So we traveled 10,000 miles to Indonesia to find the smoking baby. There he is. In a moment, we'll show you what happened when we caught up with him. But what we found along the way was even more alarming. This vast country is in the throes of an uncontrolled tobacco epidemic, and there is more than one smoking baby here. Watch as this two-year-old wakes up and lights up with the help of his own grandfather. I can't believe I'm breathing in a baby's cigarette smoke. Grandpa here told us the boy smokes because it tastes good like bread with chocolate. Do you think it's good for you to be smoking, Cairo? His grandfather says the boy smokes two packs a day. And when he ventures outside, cigarette pack in hand, none of his neighbors seem to see any problem either. You don't think smoking is addictive and gives you lung cancer? Shouldn't you be doing everything possible to keep cigarettes away from him? Incredibly, he says he thinks it's okay as long as Cairo drinks enough coffee with his cigarettes. Lest you conclude that this is some sort of fluke, take a look at seven-year-old Maulana. We met him one evening puffing away as he watched television in his two-room house. This kid smokes like a pro. Pretty incredible. How many cigarettes does he smoke every day? Yeah, Milana's mother says he smokes a pack a day. A pack a day? You know that cigarettes are deadly, right? Yeah. She says she knows, but if Milana doesn't smoke, he gets weak and starts crying. As you watch this child smoke, and as you consider the mini explosion of smoking babies here in Indonesia, the natural question is, how and why is this happening? Well, to begin with, watch this. We went out onto the streets with a public health worker and did an experiment. What about this little girl? If we gave her money, you think it would work? This eight-year-old buys a pack of cigarettes, no questions asked. Crazy. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Crazy, yes, but it is perfectly legal here for anybody of any age to buy cigarettes. They cost a dollar a pack, and there's almost no tobacco regulation. It's as if Indonesia is in an insane time warp, like America in the 1950s, when cigarette ads were everywhere, even on the anchor desk on the network news. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro country. Back then, perhaps the most iconic face of big tobacco was the Marlboro Man. Philip Morris, maker of Marlboro, stopped using him in America more than a decade ago, but the Marlboro Man has been riding free here in Indonesia. And I think the guy is so cute too. You think the Marlboro Man is cute? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't you think? You're smoking Marlboro? Why do you like Marlboro? Because it's the best. It's the best? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Are you a cowboy? <laughs> I want to be a cowboy. In 2005, Philip Morris International, which sells Marlboros around the world, bought Indonesia's third largest tobacco company called Samporna and very quickly turned it into number one, selling a mix of its best-known Western brands along with popular local ones. And right from the start, the company targeted young people, 
ABC News obtained internal documents that plot a strategy to market to young adults, making Samporna young, cool, and trendy, and the voice of a new generation of Indonesians. To that end, Philip Morris now does things here it could never do at home, sponsoring rock concerts and the Indonesian version of American Idol. Running TV ads featuring attractive young people. And speaking of attractive, Philip Morris also employs small armies of young women to go out and hawk its cigarettes. The company insists it's not targeting kids. But why then does it post billboards right near school? <laughs> this really brings home the point. This is the entrance to a school, and come with me. Just a few steps away from the entrance, there is this kiosk that is sponsored by Marlboro Lights. And at this kiosk, a student can come and buy an individual cigarette. They're only a dime a piece, and they even have a lighter on a string. Over and over, we asked Philip Morris International for an interview. They declined, sending us a pair of emails saying the company has repeatedly urged the government to ban tobacco sales to minors and has taken steps to restrict access to the events it sponsors. Unsatisfied with their answers, we decided to pay them a surprise visit at their headquarters in New York. I'm from ABC News. We're looking to interview somebody from Philip Morris International. Can you stop turn out the camera? Yes. Turn out the camera. All right, so uh, they've given us a number in Switzerland to call. Let's try it. I'm holding a picture right now of a Marlboro kiosk right outside of a school in Indonesia, and I'm curious how you guys can explain that. So you have nothing to say beyond the statement. With Philip Morris turning us down, is there anybody else accountable? We went to Indonesia's health minister, a Harvard-educated doctor. As mm -hmm. a public health mm -hmm. expert, as a doctor, as an Indonesian, mm -hmm. to see an American company mm -hmm. come in here and be so effective right. at convincing young people to smoke. Right. Of course, I, uh, I don't agree with them. I think they are uh, bad. I just don't like them, but uh, I will not, you know, say loudly like that, you know? Astonishingly, she says there's not much else she can do. In a country where tobacco employs more than four million people, where lawmakers smoke openly on the floor of parliament, and farmers and even religious groups hold pro-tobacco rallies. In fact, this country is so tobacco crazy, there is now even something called the divine cigarette. The cigarette recommended by eminent nose and throat specialists to patients who smoke. It's hard to believe now, but there was a time in America when even doctors recommended smoking. Something wonderful happens. You'll feel better when you change to Philip Morris. Today in Indonesia, there are doctors who still dispute the notion that smoking is so harmful and addictive, as we found at this medical conference. Are the three of you really saying that the global scientific community is wrong on this? And are you being paid by the tobacco companies to make that argument? We are not supported by tobacco companies. In fact, this scientist, Dr. Uh, Sutiman Sumitro, who uh, works for a state-run uh, university, uh, is convinced that cigarettes can actually be healthy. He calls them divine cigarettes. They're specially modified with nanotechnology. As part of his research, he treats people with real disorders, covering them with allegedly healing smoke. And it's not just adult patients. This three-year-old is being treated with divine cigarettes for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Now we should say this process is not causing this child any physical pain. Those marks are just from nicotine stains, but still. Are you confident that this is gonna help your child? Of course. You think so? Yeah. He's an adorable kid and you can tell his parents love him, but you just wonder what kind of medical advice they're getting. You gotta ask yourself if this is child abuse. Tobacco smoke we know causes cancer. Why would you cover a child in tobacco smoke to treat anything? Yeah, no, uh, it is difference, yeah. 
His smoke is different, he insists. But we showed your materials to two experts, one of whom called uh, your theory scary and another called it garbage. So how can you really defend what you're doing here? We uh, try to uh, understand the smoke with the different angle, yeah. His answers made very little sense, as with almost everything having to do with cigarettes in this country, including, of course, the two-year-old who first focused the world's attention on Indonesia's smoking habit. He was the reason we came here in the first place. And so we traveled deep into the countryside and up to this one-room hut. Are you Aldi? Hi, I'm Dan. How you doing, little dude? What's happening? These are some sweet glasses you got here. I like that. Oh, that's very nice, Aldi. Thank you. Where are you going? Aldi lives with his mother and father, who in that infamous video seem to be looking on unconcerned. Aldi, are you still, uh, are you still smoking or did you, did you quit? Aldi says he doesn't smoke anymore. After the video went viral, in fact, embarrassed local officials sent him to rehab in the Indonesian capital. He says he misses it. He used to smoke 20 cigarettes a day. <laughs> Ayo means what? Come on? Come on? He seems to run the house. He is, after all, holding a major threat over his parents' head. Oh, it took us So he, he keeps saying if you don't buy him a toy that he's going to start smoking again? Yes, she says. Why did you let your child smoke? She says one day he just picked up a cigarette and it came naturally. And then later when she tried to stop his budding habit, he would throw a fit. But I think a lot of parents all over the world saw this baby smoking and thought, what kind of parent would let their kids smoke? She says she wishes she had never let him start, and she's going to do her best now to keep him smoke-free. Aldi, so no more cigarettes? You, you're done for good? I will never smoke again. Yep. Where are we going? You want to believe this portly little global icon will be able to keep that promise, but in this place where tobacco giants like Philip Morris International, with almost free reign to transmit their messages, it may be tough. In fact, before we left, Aldi's mother finally admitted that she'd caught him smoking just a few weeks back. 